Welcome, everybody, to this latest edition of Testable Faith. My name is Fuzz Rana. I am a biochemist and a Christian apologist, and I work for an organization called Reasons to Believe, which sponsors this program. So if you want to know more about Reasons to Believe, I invite you to go to our website, www.reasons.org. Uh, today, we're going to take on the question, what is the human mind? And I can't think of a greater scientific mystery than the question of what is the mind? And I'm joined today in studio by Dr. Eric Hedin, who is a physicist. He also is a former professor of physics at Ball State University and at Biola University. And he's going to help us navigate this really fascinating question. He's also the author of a book called Canceled Science. So make sure you check out that book. Uh, Eric, thanks for being here with us in studio. You're welcome. It's great to be here. Thank you. So, yeah, the, the question is, what is the mind? <laughs> and I've heard you say that you think the human mind is, is a miracle. So what do you mean by that? Well, I think um, I would say a miracle in the sense that the, the human mind exhibits qualities that are really not consistent with what we know of the laws of nature. Mm. And um, you know, just, just for example, um, Consider really the, the rest of the universe besides the non-living universe. And what we see, a vast number of stars, galaxies stretching over seemingly limitless space. But it's mostly just the same. Uh, you know, stars do vary a little bit, but not that greatly. There's, mm -hmm. there's um, reasons for that. The laws of physics are at work, uh, you know, in gravitational contraction, forming stars and fusion energy and producing their, uh, their light and, and uh, heat. But um, when it comes to the, the human mind and what humans have been able to produce, we see something that's completely different, categorically different. It's not just sameness or variations on a theme, but um, human uh, kind of products of our imagination seemingly have no limit. Uh, you know, just, just sitting in the studio, I'm surrounded by uh, high-tech camera equipment, computer equipment, uh, lighting, uh, you know, building structures, none of which we would expect the laws of nature to be able to produce. And yet all of these have been produced by human ingenuity and creativity over the years. And so I think that that itself is evidence that there's something going on with the human mind that's not just the same as the laws of nature that make a star. So you, you, so you would take the position that the, that the brain and the mind are not the same thing, that, that, that yes. there may be these neurochemical reactions that are taking place in our brain, but that the mind is still distinct and is immaterial. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and that's that's an important point to make, and I know that it's uh, the subject of uh, really intense research by um, neuroscientists, and uh, some come down on different uh, kind of ends of the table with regards mm -hmm. to whether or not uh, there's a mind-brain duality. But I think uh, overall, from what I've seen the, and read, the evidence is in favor of really there being an immaterial aspect to our minds. So just from you know, studying uh, through neuroscience, finding that out, but I think that's consistent with mm -hmm. what I just described earlier about our ability to produce uh, so many outcomes that are really unnatural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you say about the idea of animal minds then? And is the human mind, in your view, different from animal minds? Uh, yes, although I, I believe that animal minds are in some ways closer to us than things that are not alive mm -hmm. in any case. Um, and of course, there's different uh, levels of kind of intelligence mm -hmm. among uh, the animal kingdom. And, um, and yet, uh, Again, using this uh, kind of a comparison, we could look at what the animal kingdom does. And again, it's, it's mostly the same. Right. Uh, within a species, they're, they're all pretty much doing the same thing. But um, then you look at what humans do, and again, there's a 
kind of like a quantum leap mm-hmm. of difference. And so I think that, again, it suggests that, yeah, there's something more to us. And, you know, to change the context a little bit, bring it into the realm of um, belief, I think that this is uh, evidence of what the Bible talks about, that humans are made in the image of God. And that that's a unique mm-hmm. gift that we have from our Creator that uh, provides a distinction between us and the rest of the animal world. So, you know, how do you understand the image of God in this framework? Um, in terms of perhaps attributes, yeah. uh, we could compare uh, human attributes to what we know of as God's attributes as revealed, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. say, in, in the scriptures. And, um, you know, one of them is uh, our ability for uh, creativity. Mm -hmm. God is creative, obviously, as we ascribe to God the creation of everything. Uh, Humans are vastly creative. I mean, think of artwork, uh, literature, even uh, writing computer code for who knows any number of applications and the things we build Mm -hmm. um, that are practical or just for fun. So that's something different than yeah. what we see in the uh, the animal world. You know, something that I find fascinating is that when you look at, for example, the, the hominins and the, the archaeological record connected with them, they are doing some remarkable things to some degree. They're, they're, mm-hmm. They have a type of technology, a type of culture, right? Yes. But it, re- it remains largely static throughout their duration. So if you look at the Habilines, it's like, characterized by Homo habilis. The technology is really unchanged for 600,000 years. Mm -hmm. Along comes Homo erectus, and it's a characteristic technology that's largely unchanged. Even Neanderthals, you know, they were on Earth longer than we've been on Earth, and the technology is unchanged. Hmm. Humans show up, and we begin our existence with, you know, what you might call primitive technology, but in relatively short order, we've been able to put people on the moon. We're now talking mm-hmm. about using the technology we've created to modify ourselves, to, to modify other life forms, right? Yes. So there is a spark, something about us that stands apart, it, that, that's, that, and it, it's connected to our creativity and our imagination. Yes, and I, I'm glad you brought up that example of how even with the hominins and so on, they're different in some way, uh, more of a sameness yeah. uh, for persisting for sometimes tens of, not hundreds of thousands of years. And again, this is not my particular area of expertise. I've, I've probably read things that, that you've written about this and, and other authors, but um, I find it to be more scientific evidence that supports kind of what we might call uh, human exceptionalism and, and again, being consistent with what we read in the scriptures that God made us in his image. And um, perhaps that includes this ability to, um, for good or perhaps not so good sometimes, use our, our intelligence or imagination to create um, technology that uh, can change things uh, one way or another. Mm-hmm. And um, certainly, sets us apart yeah. from what in general would be considered animal minds. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, and, and you know, the implications of the idea that that we bear God's image, that we we are unique, you know, that we stand apart, that we have maybe a special place in the cosmos are, are profound, right? Yes. It's um giving significance to our lives, giving um I think an eternal connection, because if we're made in the image of God, we also have the promise that God uh, is particularly concerned about us, that we're like his children, and Mm -hmm. that uh, he has obviously done everything to be able to redeem us and bring us into fellowship with him. So our lives are not just uh, over. It's not like the lights go out and we're done once we die, but I believe that uh, this immaterial aspect of our mind is also evidence of an immortal soul. Um, so it gives us a hope of eternal life. Thank you, Eric. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Testable Faith. 
Uh, if you want to know more about uh, the types of resources that Dr. Eric Hadeen has produced for us at Reasons to Believe, just go to our website, reasons.org, and search his name. Last name is H-E-D-I-N. And then also make sure that you check out his book, Cancelled Science. Uh, until next time, remember, the more that we know about science, the more we have reasons to believe.